Today, we take a dive into the insane story of Irish gangster Martin Marlowe Highland. From his early days on the streets of Dublin, to his elimination on the December 12, 2006 in a cold-blooded assassination. Born in Cabra, Dublin, he was a major Irish criminal and gang boss. Martin Highland was born to a working-class family from St. Attractor Road in Cabra, Dublin. As a teenager he led a gang of young criminals from Cabra. He was involved in burglary, car theft, and robbery. In 1986, 18-year-old Highland was sent to prison for various offenses including conspiracy to commit robbery, burglary, malicious damage, and car theft. After his release from serving a short prison sentence in the early 1990s, Highland became involved in drug dealing. He moved into the big league of crime when he became associated with P.J. Judge. December 8, 1996, gangster P.J. Judge 41, known in the media as Psycho, was shot dead as he sat in his car in Finglas, North Dublin. Provisional Irish Republic Army are the main suspects. No convictions have ever been brought from what I have researched so a more in-depth video will come in the future. A major drug trafficker and gang leader from Finglas. PJ Judge was shot dead outside the Royal Oak Pub in Finglas in December 1996. Garda suspect he was killed by provisional IRA because of his erratic and violent nature. Within a few years of Judge's death, Highland had become the dominant figure in organized crime in North Dublin. He controlled a large gang of drug dealers and armed robbers from Cabra, Finglas, and Ballyman. The gang were involved in the importation of large shipments of cannabis, cocaine, ecstasy, and heroin as well as VAT fraud, car theft, armed robbery, extortion, and the supply of firearms. Between 2000 to 2004, his gang was involved in a spate of robberies of security vans delivering money to ATM bank machines in Dublin. In a 10-month period alone, between October 2003 to July 2004, they got away with an estimated 3 million euros. Highland also had links with other major criminal gangs in Dublin and supplied guns to one of the factions involved in the Crumlin Drimnag feud. He also supplied guns to the notorious McCarthy Dundon gang who are heavily involved in the Limerick feud. All the criminal activity meant that Highland and his associates became prime targets of the Garde. In September 2005, Garda decided to adapt a full-on multi-agency tactical approach to stop his gang. The plan, involving Garda in customs, was codenamed Operation Oak. The operation was a huge success and within the first few months it had led to the seizure of 30 kilos of heroin, 35 kilos of cocaine, and 1,427 kilos of cannabis. A number of stolen vehicles, 200,000 euros in cash and weapons including AK 47s were also recovered. 26 of Highland's associates were also facing serious charges, which led to resentment and bad feeling within the gang. 11 as Garda pressure increased Highland became more isolated as gang members blamed him for all the attention. In November 2006 and again on 7 December, Highland was warned by Garda, as his protocol, that his life was in danger. On the night of December 11, 2006, Highland, who had access to several properties and never stayed at the same place two nights in a row, stayed at the home of his niece in Scribblestown Park, Finglas. Just before 9 a.m. the next morning, after his niece had left to take her daughter to school, two gunmen entered the house. Highland was sleeping in a bedroom upstairs while 20-year-old Anthony Campbell, an apprentice plumber who had called to the house earlier to work on a faulty radiator, was downstairs. One of the gunmen held Anthony Campbell downstairs while the other crept up the stairs and shot Highland twice in the head and four times in the back as he slept. Before they left they also shot the innocent Campbell once in the head, killing him instantly. Despite Garda suspecting the killers were two of Highland's most trusted lieutenants, no one has been convicted of the double murder. Eamon Dunn, who drove the getaway car for Highland's killers, effectively took control of the gang soon after. Dunn was linked to over a dozen gangland murders over the next three years before he himself was shot dead at a pub in Cabra in April 2010. If you could do me a massive favor guys, only 1% of people who watch my videos are subscribers of the channel so please do hit the like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.